the most extreme out-of-touch bunch in America you'll find in Iowa, where Republicans have introduced a bill there that would define abortion as murder. As the Ames Tribune newspaper reports and says, those charged with murder under the bill would include a mother who takes abortion-inducing drugs or a doctor who performs an abortion. It also grants no exceptions for rape, incest, or to protect the life of the mother. So here we go again. I'm joined tonight by Terry O'Neill, President of the National Organization for Women. Also with us tonight is Nancy Northup, who is the president of the Center for Reproductive Rights. And actress Martha Plimpton joins us this evening. Martha joins us from uh, the set of her TV series, Raising Hope, which airs Tuesdays on Fox. Great to have all of you with us tonight. Uh, Terry, isn't this just more evidence? I mean, the Republican Party has been talking about rebranding, and here we are back at square one. They're back after the same old wars. What about it? You know, Ed, I think what they don't understand is that they need to change their policies. Changing their rhetoric is not enough. And, and, uh, and, and suddenly you have the legislator from Michigan backing off. I don't believe they're really backing off that far. What they think they can do is, is use kinder, gentler language and still pursue a very extreme, really misogynist uh, set of policies. The thing is that the voters are not fooled. And you know, it's not just women that are not fooled. Male voters are with us, especially on uh, keeping abortion safe and legal, especially in the earliest term of, of uh, pregnancy, which is when over 90% mm -hmm. of abortions are done. Martha, what do you make of what happened? It seems like political pressure in Michigan may have turned this around. Your thoughts on that? Well, uh, you know, it, they got a national audience. Uh, you know, they had a lot more people looking at them than I guess they expected to have. And when that happens, when uh, when the larger population of the United States becomes aware of these smaller uh, bills or these smaller efforts in states or you know uh, when they become aware they get mad because they recognize what's happening this is these are laws that are essentially designed to codify coercion uh, to make coercion uh, a, a, a law uh, that women be forced into doing something that is not only unnecessary but that they don't want. Yeah. They also assume, these laws also assume that women don't understand the implications of what they're doing already. Uh, they assume that women are stupid and that we aren't aware of the biology of what's happening to us and that we haven't made our decision already when we've walked into that doctor's office. These laws also seek to undermine the relationship between patient and doctor, which is a very important sacred relationship. Uh, and essentially they're saying that the state has a stake in what you do with your body. And when the larger popular, when the American people uh, get wind of that, they, they let you know that they do not like it. Nancy, Republican governors uh, have rejected the Medicaid expansion. Uh, won't that also affect women in, in, in a great way? Well, of course. I mean, it was one of the things that was well promised in health care reform is that low income Americans would be able to have access to good quality health care. And of course, with women, it's essential that they get access to good quality reproductive health care. So it's, I want to say, criminal that they're being excluded. What do you make of Iowa? I mean, th th this is as uh, aggressive as it's ever been. Your thoughts? Well, I think what's happening in Iowa isn't good. And it's, but what people have to understand, and this goes to Martha's point, is that there's so many of these restrictions on access to abortion that are flying under the radar screen. Mm -hmm. Once in a while it pops up, but it's important uh, Ed, that you're having this on your show tonight so that people realize. I mean, there have been 400 mm -hmm. bills dropped in state legislatures this year just on access to abortion. And so it's important that we realize, yes, Iowa and North Dakota and Mississippi and uh, it, it Arkansas. It almost brings the women's movement, Martha, to a new age of activism. I mean, it's just got to be constant, isn't it? Yes, and I, you know, and uh, listen, I'm not thrilled that we have to do it, that we have to revisit this fight. There's a reason we had it in the first place. It was because before Roe v. Wade, women were dying. Sure. We know what life was like before women had access to the full range of reproductive health care services that are guaranteed by the Constitution. We know what life was like for women before Roe v. Wade. And we're not willing to go back, even if there are uh, people in state yeah. legislatures who'd like to chip away at that right. Uh, we're 
remaining vigilant, and we have to. We absolutely have to remain vigilant. Turning to the Violence Against Women Act, um, it has protected women from domestic abuse for 18 years. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, and it uh, has had broad bipartisan support in the past, but now House Majority Leader Eric Cantor is blocking the bill's reauthorization by not bringing it to the floor for a vote. House Republicans have objected to new provisions that expand protections for same-sex couples, also undocumented workers, and Native American women. Here's Senator Susan Collins pleading to members of her own party earlier this week. This is not and never should be a partisan issue. This is an equal opportunity crime that harms people regardless of their political affiliation, their profession, their location, their status in life. It is an issue that deserves bipartisan support. Terry, it sounds like uh, Republican leadership just isn't willing to listen to this, and this is discriminatory here, and they won't even bring it up for a vote. You know, the kind of uh, Violence Against Women Act that the Republicans tried to pass in the House in the 112th Congress last time around was accurately characterized as exclusionary, racist, and homophobic. And here comes Eric Cantor singing the same old tune. You know, in the 2012 elections, the one thing that the Republicans should have learned is they have a problem with women, and they have a problem with women specifically on the issue of rape. You would think that knowing that they have that kind of a problem, they would be willing to pass a, an inclusive uh, version of violence is about to pass in the Senate, is going to pass in the Senate. And what I'm really eager to see is whether Eric Cantor re remains adamant about not allowing f uh, tribal authorities to have jurisdiction over rape suspects. He just gave a speech earlier this week about where the Republican Party's got to go. Uh, Nancy, what does this tell you? Well, all of it tells us that we have to get back to thinking about the well-being of women. As you said, it has to be about women and the men who support them saying enough is enough, drawing the line. We're not going to have this. Women should have uh, uh, access across the nation to reproductive health care. They should have the same rights in Mississippi that they have in New York, and they should be safe everywhere. How vulnerable does this make women now? You know, the, the, the appropriations are still there right now for the, uh, for the um, services provided under the violence. I mean, when did this become political? Well, it, it, it honestly, it became political after the 2010 elections, which was the first federal election cycle after the Citizens United case. When you give extreme right-wing leaders of, of huge multinational corporations a green light to go and buy sure. all, the, all the elections they want to buy, which the Supreme Court did in Citizens United, you get this. And, and uh, you know, Martha, when did it become political? Mm -hmm. i got to ask you that same question, too. I mean, uh, Women Against Violence Act. Well... <clears throat> Listen, it, it, there's always been a desire, at least in you know my lifetime, to politicize women's bodies and women's health. That is something that you know the women's rights movement has struggled against for many, many generations before ours. Um, what's important is that we remember that our health and our lives are not political tools, and that American women reclaim yeah. not only their rights but their voices and actually get engaged and speak out and make sure that they are actually participating in claiming you know we may not all agree on what the what the end game is for our lives as we live them but we must agree on every single american's right to live their life as they see yeah. fit and to experience physical autonomy and one of the ways that we can do that is by ensuring that women have the right to access abortion and other okay. reproductive health care services and also recognizing that women deserve and have the right to speak out about being protected in their homes and their workplaces and et cetera with the violence against women. Martha Plimpton, thank you for your time tonight. Nancy Northup and Terry O'Neill, always great to have you with us tonight on the Ed Show. Thanks for joining us. Coming up, the best